Right, and I'll read the Costa who ran the game. We had it in the bag, put the queue on the rack, and they took it to extra time. Tell me, Amber, run the cup with a with a chicken on on the top, running in a try in the corner. Brian Davies said, Lord Derby Cup final, Catalans were always a couple of scores ahead until the final few minutes when Lemieux brought it back to 26 all. Then extra time and Catalans scored a try in the corner after seven minutes to win it 30 points to 26. Big crowd in Perpignan. Interesting to see that there were two refs for the game. Don't know if that is normal, but it worked well. Superb game. That's an interesting thing. If you can get two refs in just for the... uh... No, it was on Sunday this game, so it wasn't a double header with the Catalans game. I'm sure someone will already have corrected me on Twitter before they've reached this part <laughs> of the show. Uh, well done to the centre of Catalan side. Yeah, underpinned by a, you know, a, a homegrown spine of talented young French players. Certainly, um, a, lot, a few players in there that we recognise from Super League: Lucas Albert and Ulrich de Costa in particular. Um, they also had Thibaut Margolet, Lombard, Balmas, Hugo Perez, Mikel Goudemond, and uh, Paul Segué, 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 whatever they pronounce that. Um, I love pronouncing pronouncing all the French names because I know it won't. <laughs> you do the best of the job as I do. So. Wrong and it'll come back <laughs> to me. But they all played as well for Catalan uh, in this side, and. Um, yeah, I think one of the interesting things, I mean, obviously exciting that it got so close and came back and then a, a golden point try to, to seal it is really exciting. Uh, it came from a, a penalty that um, that the Catalans were given that gave them the, the field position to, to get in there and score. So well done for them to that. I think Louis Jouffre was uh, named man of the match. There was a... A couple of Simbinians on both sides. Uh, another tackle off the ball. That sounds familiar. Tackle. Uh, there's two Simbinians actually for the side that won in the end. Um, Catalan side. But um, yeah, the interesting sideline to this is this Catalan side, the top of the table as well in France this year. But next year they're going to be running an under 23 outfit, which obviously is good for the development of their own players. And uh, they still can probably be strong because when you look down that lineup, quite a few of those players we mentioned are younger players um, certainly Lucas Alba is still only 20 isn't he and and I, I, I'm sure a few of the other guys are pretty young Ul- Ulrich de Costa Paul Seguier uh, people like that so very exciting uh, for Catalans to win that one and it's good b- bodes well for the senior team that the reserve players are going to be chomping at the bit to get get game time uh, after running in great form there and uh, they've still got the rest of the league campaign to run to get into the playoffs and, and win the double hopefully so exciting stuff there okay we also had one in for well, Brian it on. just shows you done it. it sorry we did yeah so just, just probably no move problem. on very, very quickly it just shows you what what a kind of uh, I, mean, I know it's not a reserve grade but it kind of functions in the same way doesn't it in it does terms Catalan, of yeah yeah, you know what I mean. So, so it just shows you if, if we if if Super League had you know had a full functioning reserve grid, you know maybe, maybe that's not a bad idea. But yeah, so and, Brian got touch around the lead miners. With, predominantly made up with under twenty three players because that's yeah. what it would be. It would be filling that gap between the nineteens and the and the seniors. Exactly. Okay, Brian Davies uh, yeah. got in touch about the lead miners versus Milford Marlins. The game on what's it called now? Bloody free sports. There you go. Spots, yeah. uh, dull first so, half due to Milford's inability to complete a set of six. Lee went 11 nil up, and after about 50 minutes, the game got going. Milford started to hold onto the boat, but uh, sorry, Milford started to hold onto the ball, and both teams moved the ball about. Milford came back to 11-12 before Lee scored three tries at the back end of the second half to go 27-12 up with. 80 minutes on the clock. Milford then scored two back-to-back tries <laughs> to pull it back to 27-22, but ran out of time. So it sounds like it had an exciting finish. Um, Certainly does. In that one, I, I didn't catch that one, uh, unfortunately. But um, thanks to everyone for all those reviews, giving us a great picture of the world of Rugby League outside of Super League. And we're now going to look forward to what's going to happen next week in the world of Rugby League in our preview and predictions. Preview and predictions time then, Alan. And it's round 18 of Super League, the state of mind round. And it kicks off with two teams who might be doing a bit of um, soul-searching around around themselves and probably have a bit that they need to offload um, themselves. And uh, because it's two struggling sides on Thursday night, 7.45 kickoff on Sky Sports for Salford versus 
Witness. Uh, what's the other Sky game? I don't know. Must it, mm. Anyway, we'll do Solver versus gonna, Witness I, whilst I'm trying to Yeah, I'm going to hope it's Leeds and Ellens, but anyway. I'm oh, actually, no, Huddersfield Carlin will be a bit again. But yeah, anyway. Um, Salford Witness. Yeah, real cripple fight. Um, I'm going to go home advantage and go with Salford for no particular reason other than the fact they're playing at home. If it was at uh, on the plastic pitch, I'd be calling this a witness, but but I'll um, I'll go for Salford on this one. I'm going to go Five, for witness, six. but I don't know what they're going to have back in terms of injuries uh, for the pack. But I just I just struggle to see what Salford are doing, and I think witness have still got some strike players that can pull out some tries against some weak teams. Mella, Hambry, Runciman. Um, are all capable of, of pulling something else, something out against a poor team. I think in Salford, I'm not sure where the new motivations coming in from Salford, but Witness have have got the new coach in, and I know it didn't work out last week, but maybe you know something will filter through from that. I'm going to tip Witness. I'm going to go 24-18 in favour of Witness, but I'm really not sure. Not sure. On that one. <laughs> Bit of a guess. Yeah. <laughs> The other TV game is indeed Leeds versus St. Helens, Friday 7.45. So we're going to see uh, an injury crocked Leeds side against a high-flying St. Helens side. I can't back against Saints at all. I'm going a reasonably wide margin. I think 30 points to 10 or there or thereabouts from St. Helens. Leeds just don't, don't have attacking cohesion, don't have enough physicality in the pack. Whereas St. Helens have everything at the moment. So I'm not tipping against them. Uh, what about you? <laughs> No, I, I can't disagree with that. I mean, St Helens won won last week, probably paying at about fifty percent. Um, they probably don't need to get much above much above that to beat Leeds at the moment. So, yeah, St Helens by plenty. The other game on Friday night, also seven forty five kickoff, is an intriguing one because the free entry. So hopefully that will pan out for the Giants and they'll get lots of people signing up for that, giving their giving themselves um, the opportunity to be spammed relentlessly by promos for future Huddersfield games but also might enjoy this game I, I don't know if there'll be enough people to take that up to really give a, a huge home field atmosphere um, so to speak but I think Huddersfield will be looking to buy it back against the Catalan side that knocked them out of the cup um, my prediction on this one is that Huddersfield will win I've gone 28-16 I really like the look of young Ollie Russell in the halves I think the forward pack is really motoring at the moment particularly Daniel Smith and Seb Ikehifo and I don't see that stopping this week even though Catalan are also in good form um, it's a tough one to call but I'm going Huddersfield what about yourself? Mm. Well yeah it's, it's, a, it's a crucial game isn't it down there at the bottom reaches of the uh, of the top 8 um, yeah I, yeah I'm, 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 I'm going to go with home advantage cowbell and all so so let, let's go for Huddersfield but I don't think there'll be much in it I'll go back I'll go Huddersfield by four OK Saturday 5pm um, I'll be going over to Hull FC to watch the Wigan Warriors it'll be the first time I'll have seen them in action in person since Magic Weekend so let's hope it was my absence that was the issue <laughs> uh, what do you think is going to happen in this one how do you think it's going to pan out OK uh, Wigan have got a long way to go um, Hull are managing to to perform even though they've got you know the injury crisis to end all injury crises I, I, this one is real <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to stick with Hull home advantage we're going to still a long way away in my eyes but yeah Hull by 8 ok I'm hopeful that we're going to get something back in the pack uh, maybe one or two players back in there I don't think Joe Greenwood will be in shape to play in this one even though he's been signed but I'm not sure of the status of Ben Flower hopefully he'll be back uh, to add competition for places there um, so that, that'll be a positive because him and Tony Club have laid great foundations most of the time this year so I hope we can do that Wigan players have had a bit of an extended break with the game on Thursday, a few of them have, have um, been on short trips abroad and that sort of stuff to kind of unwind and maybe release things from themselves when they've come when not they've unwinding come. too much I hope well hopefully there's, there's no <laughs> rectums of Mallorca or wherever they might be <laughs> Uh, going to pop up I've not seen anything yet so hopefully that's a positive um, but I kind of think that's what they've needed a bit of time apart um, from each other because they've not been playing together on the field very well uh, so maybe they just need to 
get away from each other and and stop focusing on this negative swell that's going on and you can remove some of the blame for each other that's probably because when a team's losing games that's probably what's going to happen maybe release a little bit of that and then come back get a good team bonding a uh, few team building sessions maybe early in this week to, to, to set us up for a platform for a return to form against an injury depleted Hull FC side so I'm going Wigan 30-20 to 20 and I, I do feel like it's a bit freak that these three results have come in a row just because we were only really only one of them was inexcusable I think and that was last week um, but Hull, Hull FC have been going good if we can shut down Jake Connor though I can't see them scoring enough points to beat us ok Sunday afternoon, two games on Sunday, um, something that's been relatively rare of late. Sunday the first league, one yeah. is Wakefield versus Warrington, which is a three o'clock kickoff. Wakefield obviously have had a couple of good home wins, like you've mentioned a few, referenced a few times in the show, and they're now playing against third place team Warrington. For me, Warrington are going too well, and I just expect them to have enough in this game. I've gone 34 points to 20 to Warrington. I, I just think they're they're a bit better here. Wakefield, though, have had a, a strong, a long turnaround, so I, I wouldn't write them off. But Wake Warrington to bounce back for me. Yeah, I as much as I've been talking um, Wakey up, um, I'm going to go against them on this one. Um, I think Warrington were a bit unlucky last week because uh, the you know if they, if they have the kicking boots on, they'd have won. So um, I'm going to say Warrington by 10. Fair enough, fair enough. So we're both in Warrington in that one. And then finally, uh, Sunday 3.30pm, Castleford versus Hull Cow. So it's a, a flip reverse of the game, the, the catch-up game they played a couple of weekends ago. And I still think it's going to have the same outcome as that one with Castleford winning. I've gone 32-16. Uh, they played really well last week. They, they might have a couple of those players that missed out late on in that game back, which will only strengthen them. But even so... Um, they showed enough in that game for me. Hulk KR, far too patchy. They can do some great stuff when they keep the ball alive, but it's not enough, I don't feel, against a side that's in stronger form, starting to defend well more often than they're not defending well. Um, you know, that, that Saints game aside, Cass have defended really well for the last month or so, I feel, has, and built off that platform. Um, so I can only pick... Castleford and that, and uh, even even with Joel Tompkins potentially making his whole Kingston Rovers debut. What about yourself? Yeah, I, I don't think Joel will make too much of a difference one way or the other, really, whether he plays or not. I think I think Cass are the better team, and they are in good form, kind of starting to starting to starting to show a little bit, even even with their uh, um, a few absences that they've got. So Cass at home, too strong for OKR. Cass by fourteen. Fair enough. So similar is there. Championship game of the week. It's one of the, you know, top six battle, and that top six is going to be mm. exciting. Certainly, Toulouse in second place host Lee in sixth place. Uh, Lee are in great form. Toulouse defensively have been letting a few tries in of late, even though they've been scoring plenty of themselves too. What do you? Th- who do you think is going to win? I think this is a chance for Toulouse to kind of Nail really it. scupper Lee's chances to get in the top four Lee, Lee really need to be winning out almost um, to get in um, and it obviously helps to beat the teams that are around you but I just think to lose at home I'm going to pick to lose on this one I think Lee are the form side I'm, I'm going to have to go with Lee just because I have a few concerns over to lose his ability to keep the score down and it might be last possession wins it, uh, it which is kind of what happened between the two last time they played yeah yeah. Yeah, definitely. League One game of the week and it's the game that we're encouraging people to attend support Whitehaven. Uh, and also, you know, back the balls if you're a Bradford fan. It is that Whitehaven versus Bradford game, reduced ticket price entry, um ten pounds a ticket I believe it is. It and is. uh and so everyone can get behind that, but obviously we're gonna predict Bradford to win, aren't we both? Obviously, yes. <laughs> yes. I think so, yeah. Should, should, but yeah, I mean, to be fair, last last time we went to Cumbria, we came a cropper, so so we, we shouldn't go into it too com- too confidently. But um, we sh- we should beat Whitehaven. We really should. So yeah, Bradford to win. Okay, in the NRL, the brick pick starts on Thursday. Um, Sky is showing the Eels versus the Rabbitohs, which is a 10:50 a.m. kickoff. The other two games with British interest look like they're just going to be able to be caught on the Watch NRL app. Um, unless the schedules have changed since I wrote this rundown uh, Dragons <laughs> versus the Seagulls Saturday 8.30 West Tigers versus the Canberra Raiders 
Sunday at 7.10am. Okay, that is us. That is our prediction.